Atlanta. What's going on? It's Dukes and Bell on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. We start off every day and every hour by saying, hey, hey man. man. It is good to have you listening on a Monday coming off of uh, the second preseason game, Mike, against the Bengals. Um, we don't like ties, but the final score doesn't matter. It it matters what we got a chance to see. And, Mike, we, as in this show, didn't necessarily see enough of Desmond Ritter. Now, I know Coach said he felt good about the work that they put in. Mm-hmm. They had a first long drive. It was great, 17 plays. Six penalties, though, set us back. But, they, you know, for every two steps forward, uh, it was three steps back, and they kept driving. But did that bug you? Because we went into Friday's contest thinking we were at least going to see Maybe two, maybe three series of Desmond Ritter. Yeah, but you know when you get to almost seventeenth, that's almost like two series. You got as much. You ate, you ate like like the entire first quarter on that drive. But yeah, if you didn't watch the game and you just looked at the box score, you'd say, "Oh, Ritter, you know, it looks pretty good." Seven nine. Oh, he threw a pick. But you know, if you watched the game, if you were there, and again, I was one of like the you know few thousand that were there at Mercedes Benz. The refs were in midseason form, or the refs were just sloppy, or whatever you want to call. It. They were all over the place, some ticky tack stuff. We should. We would have had a touchdown in that drive. We would have been inside the five. Ritter was using his feet. It was great. So I, I liked what I saw, but I wanted, like, again, I just wanted more. But the boss and the only voice that matters is Arthur Smith, Carl, and he saw enough. I didn't like the penalties uh, overall. We just had way too many in, in the game period. Um, and, and then, by the way, I don't, I don't want to blame the refs. There were legitimate penalties, but the second foul on Lindstrom I thought was complete nonsense. All right, so, you know, he gets called. Uh, obviously, you know, we, we talk about the offensive line. Two holding penalties on that opening drive. Either way. Receiver um, gets mugged on the interception. Yeah, but but I just felt like overall no for, for a team yeah. that didn't get itself penalized, we were the, mm. the least penalized team last year in the NFL. I know you guys don't believe that, but we were. It's true. To get six, 13 penalties in the game? Like, that's ridiculous. So I, I think, if anything, Arthur Smith is probably banging on that as we move forward towards the third preseason game. But I absolutely love Bijan. And it, it's no secret, guys. You don't. And I always say this. Doesn't take long. You don't need four years to see if a guy can play, okay? Now, I've been fortunate enough to watch these games at the University of Texas, watching him in the Big 12. He was doing the same stuff. A lot of you were not paying attention, and I get it. But now, with the, with, the, with him being with the Falcons, Mike, you get a chance to see this electric thing that he has. And I don't even know how to describe it. A guy was asking me this weekend, well, how would you describe what you're seeing? He only had 20 yards, but it was like the best 20 yards that I've seen in a long time. Yeah, I mean, he made a stutter step and he made a move. And you, and you saw him, like, hit fifth gear, or in this case, maybe sixth gear. But, I mean, he had another, he's got another gear. And it's nothing against Algier because we love Tyler and he's got a role on this team. But this dude is just, you know, this he's got it. And that's what the fans that I said to Randy Andy behind me, just guy pointing to his kid. Look at that. I mean, that's special stuff right there. That's the stuff, you know, I know some guys accuse us of being homers with this, but we're just telling you what we saw. He is electric. And to Carl's point, now everyone else is getting a chance to see it who didn't see it at Texas. 404-726-0929. You can watch us on YouTube at 929thegame. Twitch.tv slash ATL 929thegame. Whispers running the cameras. We got a lot to chop up. Arthur Blank is going to stop by in the 3 o'clock hour, and we'll talk to him about this new thing that he is involved in. But we also get a chance to ask him about our Falcons. This hour brought to you by the Man Cave Store. Up your Man Cave game this football season with a new custom pool table, uh, they've got theater seats, guys, shuffleboard for your family, friends, fun. Visit mancavestore.com. All right, as we talk about the Falcons, I do want you to hear what Coach Arthur Smith had to say about the penalties because it's the one thing that bugged me. I know we, we there were some guys, Mike, that made some plays. Helms continues to shine, but this is what Arthur said about the penalties. It's, here's what I would look at. The pre-snap stuff, that's in our control. Once the whistle blows, we have to look at it, see, you know, those are subjective calls. Maybe they're not. I, I haven't seen them. Those are kind of the penalties of aggression that we got to be uh, got to look at. But the, the stuff we can control, for example, that's 100% on us. And that's an excuse. I mean, if you got bad technique and obvious holes, I mean, that's that's bad football, and we got to clean that up. So I got to see those. Either way, it doesn't matter. Like, it didn't matter at the time. They called them. Um, you know, like I said, if we can carry over what we did last year, we weren't penalized. I think we were released in the league. We got to continue to coach that and, and and play the right technique. Well, it's one reason we bought in last year, Mike. I think too with the penalties, we look like a disciplined football team. Yeah, and that's the thing. I, it's this is the uh, this is the example that we all point to why we hate preseason football. It's sloppy. It's the only chance the starters get in. But if you put the starters for anything more than that half, and they get injured, then the coach is a moron. So it's just it's it's a it's a catch twenty two. But there are a lot of things that certainly he'll be belly aching about. He was hot. He was hot on the sideline. And, like, again, I'm not trying to rationalize that because it was terrible. 13 for 102. And it's to Arthur's point, 
false starts, pre-snap stuff, all that. That's that's mental mistakes. You know, Drake London do all those things got to get cleaned up. But I just thought, you know, the the drive that should have resulted in a score that that would have been perfect. We talk, hey, went down the field, seventeen plays, touchdown. But uh, they the refs got a little ticky tack there in the end. And also, they mugged a receiver that resulted in the tip ball that got picked off. But Arthur's got plenty of things for these guys to pick on. I also thought on the defensive side, after the backups looked so good in Miami, we got one sack on the day, but there was a lot of pressure that didn't result in a sack that was like, oh, almost there. And I, I don't like to see that. I want to see the guys on the ground. I thought it was too much just almost got you. Yeah, and I know, you know, for some people it might not matter. The points mattered to me. Like, you you drove the ball. You went from your yeah, own 16-yard six, line six, right. to the four-yard line of the Bengals, and you get nothing out of it. Like, I just can't accept that because Arthur Smith has said, we got to score more points. Arthur, I don't care if it's in preseason no. or the regular season. You practice like you play. I mean, and obviously, if, we need to score more points. And if this is what it's going to be, so I'm frustrated about that, Mike. A great drive. I give him that. But we get nothing out of it? But, I mean, the one guy we expect. I mean, if I told you you're going to get two holding penalties from Chris Lindstrom on the first drive, that doesn't happen. No. It doesn't happen in the regular season. So, I'm not as upset. I mean, I get it. I don't want to see it because it made the game interminable in the first half. But, certainly, it'll be cleaned up. But we're seeing that if you watch preseason football around the league, a lot of this is going on. It's just guys are sloppy. Tackling is bad because these guys don't get to practice twice a day like the old days. But again, Carl, I'm with you. It's, it just stinks that we don't get to see. All I think the fans, you got like, it's like a big appetizer platter. You get to see Bijan. You get to see Pitts make a catch. Then I got to be honest, that the Ritter's got to be more accurate with that throw. Pitts makes a nice behind the cat, behind his back catch. Great play by Drake London, unbelievable catch. All that stuff kind of really gets you going. And then, you know, you only get it for a quarter. And then the rest of the game, it's, you know. It's backups. So granted, backups made some plays. I thought nice job by Logan Whiteside. He does a two-minute drill to set up the tying field goal for what it's worth at the end of the game. Yeah, 13-13. There are no extra periods in uh, preseason, and nor should they be. Um, at the end of the day, good outing, bad outing. Feel good about it. Shrug outing. Shrug outing. <laughs> are you are you <laughs> in, indecisive about what you saw? Um, here's my thing as far as heading into the season. And and guys, as we talk about Week One, which is approaching fast. You just want to feel good about the things that you should be feeling good about. There are still unknowns, and there will be as the season starts. But do you feel good about Ritter, Mike? Again, seven of uh, seven to nine, eighty yards. Can I hear Coach talk about Desmond Ritter's mobility, which is something else that I think we haven't talked enough about? Playing from the pocket, you guys have heard me talk about that. The pressure of it, but when you can extend plays, that's such a big advantage in this league. The, the way they have to rush you and the rush plans that you'll get. And Des is a fast. Fast guy, and he's got a feel for that. You saw it a little bit last year at the end, and you saw it tonight a little bit. And that changes what I said. It changes some of the calls they'll make and how they have to try to contain you. And um, so it was good to see. It was good to see. And, again, we're not going to have design run plays for Desmond Ritter, but he's showing you he's got that ability to extend plays. That's all you can ask for. Mm -hmm. Get out of the pocket, get away from, uh, you know, the guys that are chasing you, and maybe make a play down the field, Mike. That is something that I think we, as, mm -hmm. as you know, Falcon fans, I don't think we've talked enough about that. We had that with Marcus Mariota because you knew he was fast. All right. Desmond Ritter's fast, too. Yeah, I liked what I saw from Ritter. I thought, you know, what you and I, if you listen to the show during the summer camp or earlier at Flower Branch, you and I, you're always saying, pull, you know, let's get the ball out. I thought the ball came out, and with the exception, look, he still made the completion to Pitts. Pitts was, it was in his area. But I thought the ball came out quickly. He was decisive. He made good throws, good reads. Everything was what you'd want to see except for the final throw, which was deflected. 